Hello everyone. In today's class also, we discuss, uh, sorry, we define about some basic terminologies which are related to this chapter. Okay, that is distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, force, etc. Okay, first we define distance or distance traveled by an object or a particle like that. Distance is the length of the particle, length of the actual path. Distance is the length of actual path traveled by a particle, traveled by a particle from initial position to final position from initial sorry between initial and final position between initial and initial and final position what is distance it is the length of actual path travel length of the actual path Travelled by a particle between initial and final position. For example, a particle, for example, a particle goes from an initial position A to a another position B. For an example, a particle moves from A to B, which has a length 2 meter. Okay. Again, the same particle moves from B to C with a distance say 3 meter and then the particle return back to the initial position that is it return back to A from C with a length 5 meter. Then what is the total distance travelled by an object? It travels, the object travels from A to B, B to C and return back to A that is total distance is nothing but AB plus BC plus CA. It is the length of the actual path traveled between the initial and final position. That is the initial position and then it returns to final position. So, in the total length of the actual path traveled between initial and final position is called distance. Okay. That is distance traveled at certain interval of time t is given by the distance is equal to AB plus BC plus C. Okay. So AB is 2 meter, BC is 3 meter, and C is 5 meter. Then total t equal to plus B plus 5 is 10 meter. This is the total distance of the that means distance of the particle which travels from A, B, if it travels A to C like that. Okay. Then, for example, if you go from your home, if you go from your home to bus stands, that is say from point A to B, which has 3 kilometer. Okay. Again, you go from bus stand to college, which has 2 kilometer. Okay. Then, you return back to home directly. You return back to home directly with 6 kilometer or with shortest distance that is 4 kilometer. Okay. Then what is the total distance travelled by the by, by, by you? That is 3 kilometer that is from home to bus stand. Uh, 2 kilometer that is from bus stand to college and then you return to the home through the uh, and then you return to the home directly from the college that has 5 kilometer. Total length of the path is 3 km plus 2 km plus 4 km. That is 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 4, 9 km. That is the distance. What is distance? The length of the actual path travelled by a particle between initial and final position. And distance is a, we know that distance in the previous class uh, we discuss about scalars and vectors. What is, is it? Is it distance is scalar or vector? Yes. Distance is a scalar quantity. Okay. So, it has, doesn't has any direction. It has only magnitude. So, scalar has only magnitude. So, SI unit of scalar is 
मीटर मीटर ओके नेक्स्ट डिस्प्लेसमेंट डिस्टेंस इज इन डिस्टेंस इज दूरा डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज स्थान पलटा डिस्प्लेसमेंट मीन स्थान पलटा सो डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज द shortest distance between initial and final position of this displacement it is the shortest shortest distance between initial and final position initial and final position shortest to distance between initial and final position for example the particle is moving along positive x axis from the origin say o to the point p which has a length 2 cm okay again so this is the initial position of the particle okay let us call this initial position as x i x i denotes the initial position the same particle again moves from the point a to the point b okay so the position of the particle from o to b is xf xi is the initial position of the particle from o to a xf is the final position of the particle that means at a certain interval of time t the particle reaches the distance b that means xf then what is the displacement that is shortest distance so so uh, displacement is nothing but the shortest distance between in final and initial position that means final position minus initial position gives displacement the displacement final position minus initial position gives displacement that is x is equal to x is the displacement so x is equal to xf minus xi xf is the so xi is the initial position of an object xf is the final position of object okay so xi minus so xf minus xi gives the displacement that is x so it is the shortest distance between the initial and final position okay so sa unit of displacement is also meter sa unit of displacement is meter and this uh, displacement is a vector quantity displacement is a vector quantity because the displacement has particular direction okay the object moves along the uh, initial direction i said that the object is moving along positive x axis if it moves along negative x axis then its value gets changed okay so it is a vector quantity what is distance it is the length of the actual path traveled between initial and final position but displacement is the shortest distance between initial and final position okay next speed next we define speed so we know that speed is also scalar quantity so the speed is defined as the rate of change of distance speed is defined as the rate of change of distance okay that is speed is equal to rate of rate is nothing but time time of rate of change of distance distance by time speed is the distance by time taken or rate of change of distance is nothing but speed okay so s n unit of speed is meter per second because s n unit of distance is meter and divided by s n unit of time is second so it has meter per second s n unit of speed is meter per second okay next we shall define velocity okay speed is the rate of change of distance but velocity is the rate of change of displacement velocity is the rate of change of 
displacement rate of change of displacement that is velocity is equal to velocity is equal to displacement by time displacement by time velocity can be defined as ratio of displacement to the time taken or rate of change of displacement so velocity of an object is vector quantity velocity is a vector quantity okay next we should define acceleration so this acceleration is denoted by the letter a small a acceleration is also vector quantity so acceleration is defined as rate of change of velocity acceleration is defined as rate of change of velocity rate of change of velocity or it is defined as acceleration is equal to velocity by time taken velocity by time that means acceleration is defined as ratio of velocity to the time taken SI unit of acceleration is meter per second square what is SI unit of acceleration meter per second square okay these are the very important terms which are useful in this chapter but you discuss you will discuss this uh, topics that means speed distance displacement velocity acceleration in detail in the chapter motion in a straight line okay here just you remember the definitions it's enough okay next we shall discuss some basic relations of between physical quantities that is directly proportional and inversely proportional relation for example a is directly proportional to b this is general concept don't worry about this a is directly proportional to b means if the a increases the quantity a increases suppose the quantity a increases the quantity b also increases suppose the quantity a decreases b also decreases this is the directly proportional uh, the relation that is a is directly proportional to b as a increases b also increases as a decreases b also decreases for example f is directly proportional to m what is f your f is the force what is m f is the mass as force increases applied force increases mass of an object also increases our force sorry force decreases mass also decreases or we should write acceleration as force increases acceleration also increases as force decreases acceleration also decreases this is the directly proportional to directly proportional relation or p is directly proportional to v like that that p is the pressure p is the volume as pressure increases volume also increases as pressure decreases volume also decreases like that this is the directly proportional relation in directly proportional relation as one quantity increases another also increases as one quantity decreases another quantity also decreases next inversely proportional relation to write inversely proportional relation as this that is a is inversely proportional to b to read it as a is inversely proportional to b okay in inversely proportional relation as a increases as a in, a a increases b goes on decreases as a increases b goes on decreases or otherwise as a decreases b goes on increases okay one quantity increases one quantity increases another one decreases if one decreases another one increases that is the inversely proportional relation for example here also right p is inversely proportional to v to write as p is inversely proportional to v the p is the pressure v is the volume okay v is the capital v right capital v v is the volume okay as pressure increases volume of an object also volume also increases as pressure decreases 
volume sorry as pressure inverse proportion in inverse proportion equation as pressure increases volume goes on decreases as pressure decreases volume goes on increases these are the directly and inversely proportional relation in directly proportional relation as a increases b also increases as a decreases b also decreases but in inversely proportional relation as a increases b decreases as b b a decreases b goes on increases okay next force our day to day life experience tells us that if a body at rest remains at rest until someone push or pull it for example here the duster is rest on the table okay suppose i push the duster like this this start duster starts moving that means duster changes its position that is the duster changes its position from rest to motion uh, when i apply the force that means a force is required to change the position of an object or it requires to move the object okay so another example so we shall take another example suppose a ball is moving on the surface the ball moves until someone push or pull it to stop the ball okay that means force is the external agency is required to stop the moving object or it also required to move the uh, resting object that means the external agency which is required to cause the motion or which opposes the motion that external agency is called force now what is force force is a push or pull force is a push or pull it requires to cause the motion or it sometimes it requires to oppose the motion for force is a push or pull it requires to requires to cause the motion to require the required to cause the motion or to oppose the motion oppose the motion of a moving body to oppose the motion of the moving body okay and what is force 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 is the push or pull required to cause the motion or to oppose the motion okay sir i here i push the duster that means i apply some external force to the duster if i apply, apply the external force to the duster this duster starts moving that means here i apply the force by contacting the surface this force is called as contact force the force applied to the surface by contacting the object or surface this is called contact force okay in a, i suppose i take another example if i drop this piece of chalk from certain height like this the piece of chalk is attracted towards the earth here there is no contact force between the piece of chalk and earth that means here there is no pull or push is applied to duster but sorry push or pull is applied to piece of chalk but the piece of chalk falls downwards because there is a gravitational force of attraction between this piece of chalk and earth so here yeah, the gravity there is no contact between the piece of chalk and earth initially there is no contact between piece of uh, piece of chalk and earth this force is called as gravitational force that is force at a distance there is no contact force at a distance there is no contact between the bodies but here in this case the force is applied by contacting the surface it is called as contact force so this is called as what is this that is gravitational force that is force at a distance another example we we'll take magnets so magnet attracts iron at a distance there is no contact between the initially there is no contact between the magnet and iron that force is called as action at a distance or force at a distance okay in general we define force act push or pull it required to cause the motion 
or to oppose the motion of a moving body. So till this we discuss about basic terminologies which are related to the chapter that is laws of motion. In next session we discuss the chapter that is laws of motion. This is only basic concept. In next session we discuss the chapter. We discuss that means we go to the syllabus. Okay.